Hello everyone, this is Monica Lees from Fishman Flooring Solutions, and I will be joined today with Chris North to talk about hardwood flooring and topics surrounding application, acclimation, inspection, and more. So I am gonna go ahead and invite Chris to the conversation right now. Hello, Chris. Yes, hi, Monica, good morning. Good morning, how are you doing today? Great, ready to sell some hardwood. <laughs> All right, uh, what brought you to discuss specifically hardwood with us today? What is your interest surrounding it? Well, my interest is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I've sold hardwood for a long time in my career, um, up until 13 years ago. And then I believe five or six years ago, we took on um, our Betsy Ross line of hardwood. And that was right up my alley here at Fishman. So um, I know a lot about it, sold a lot of hardwood, and it really helps me with my um, sales with our Betsy Ross line that we have. Mm -hmm. Uh, why is acclimation maybe the number one mistake when installing hardwood floors? Well, acclimation is basically you have two types of hardwood. You got solid hardwood, three quarter inch, or an engineered, which are generally three eighths or um, half inch. This is an oak piece. If you took the piece, wood spreads widthwise in a plank. So if you add moisture to the plank, it's going to expand widthwise and mm -hmm. the reason you want to acclimate wood is you want that wood living in the environment that it's going to live in for example your house should be um, between 65 and 75 degrees on your thermostat and between 35 and 55 uh, relative humidity that keeps everything nice and even so the three so the oak plank will not spread widthwise when moisture is added, or in the winter time, when you turn your heat on, everything dries up and you'll have gaps. So if it's pro not properly acclimated, 72 hours, uh, so four, three, four, five days in a house where it's going to live, it's gonna either expand or contract and you're gonna have issues. Mm. You mentioned um, special um, spaces in, um, yeah, special rooms in your space. So what floors do you recommend? Like uh, ground floor, first floor, where do you recommend hardwood to be? Even types of rooms, so like kitchens or living rooms, what are your recommendations? Solid hardwood can only be installed on grade and above grade, not in a basement. There's too much moisture in the basement. Mm. Where an engineered hardwood of five cross ply can be installed on grade, above grade, and below grade in basements. Oh, so, and I think that speaks to our Betsy Ross front line, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes. That mm -hmm. can be installed in basements. It's on a concrete floor, so it's going to need to be glued down. What causes shade variations in the boards, and how should an installer handle shade variations in a large installation space? Well, really, what you should do is always have three or four cartons open and pull boards from different cartons. You don't want carton one installed, carton two installed. You wanna be pulling from different cartons. And shade variation is just a natural um, part of hardwood. So that's just the wood. Uh, the Betsy Ross we have, um, we have a moderate, we have an extreme variation, and we have more of a builder grade neutral variation. So mm -hmm. that's based on back of our samples we show the different variations, what you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. Back when I sold hardwood, it was the same exact picture, same room scene for every piece of wood. So this, we've come a long way in helping people pick out with what they want as far as shade variation. What trends do you see then with colors and the desire for shade variations? The past five to 10 years, we've looked at a lot of hand scraping um, high character, um, grays have been very popular. I see red, red oaks coming back in, um, back where we were 10 years ago or so. But yeah, the gray barn, worn out looking wood has been really the hot thing right now in wider widths, five inch, seven inch, you know, we're a long way from the two and a quarter and three inch strips. What should an installer or contractor do to properly inspect hardwood boards? 
and what sort of things should they inform the end user to build trust around that? We need to teach our salespeople that wood is not scratch proof. Um, we have a great aluminum oxide. There's been a lot of formulas come on the market that really help resist scratching a little bit. But scr again, wood is not scratch proof. And that's really what the salespeople on the floor need to tell their people. As far as the installers, they just want to look for real defects like splintering of the wood or um, stain missing from the wood. Or maybe you'll take, have a piece of wood that's bowed a lot. Just cut that off and use a short part of it. So they just want to look out that for that. And they want to look out to make sure that the wood has been acclimated and that we have our proper moisture controls in place. What type of adhesive do you recommend or, or um, substrate is recommended with hardwood? Concrete, clean concrete or uh, plywood. So we're either glue down engineered floors or we are going to staple them down. So Perfect. you would have plywood. You could glue down, you can staple down. A lot of people like that permanent floor being installed. The third option is floating. Um, I am not the biggest fan of floating a hardwood floor. I prefer you staple it or you glue it down. And the, uh, we have urethane adhesives. We still have great urethane adhesives to glue solid or engineered wood down. And we have hybrid um, urethane adhesives as well from different manufacturers. We always have a solution as far as gluing it down. In order to manage the expansion and contraction, what is the rule of thumb uh, when applying expansion joints? The only expansion joints you have would be the perimeter of the wood. And in this case, with an engineer, you want to have, if it's a half inch thick product, which our product is, you want to have a half inch expansion, expansion joist around the perimeter of the wood. Engineer floors will gap or cup a little bit on the end joints only. So you will see that if you are in extreme mm -hmm. humidity. Any co common hardwood themes you encounter when interacting with your customers? Hardwood is all about look. Um, I don't think people really care about the thickness actually or the makeup of the wood. They just are looking for the look. That's the color I want. That's the hand scraping I want. Um, that's a, or with no hand scraping that I like. It's all up to the end user and it all really comes down to color. Uh, what should a dealer know when choosing uh, new hardwood lines in their store? Um, engineered, wider, five, seven inch planks are really hot right now. And our Betsy Ross Frost line does carry the seven inch. It really comes down to how the color looks and I want you stocked, to be honest with you. So they want to know it's readily available. And they also want to know that you have moldings that match as well. T-molds, um, edge guards, and so on. Mm -hmm. So matched T-molds. Um, and, 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 they, and they want a nice display that shows what the wood's mm -hmm. going to look like. Yep. That's great. Uh, the Betsy Ross line is unique with eight foot long planks. And so you will get some eight footers in the box. And actually, I believe the summer when we get some updates, we're going to go down to seven, six or seven foot lengths. Um, we have some very nice hand scraped looks. We have white oak or we have hickory, um, some nice colors, uh, half inch thick, be glued, nailed or floated. It's just a great looking line. It has great looks. By far in my reach, and I sell a lot of the Liberty Bell, which we consider the extreme shading and the extreme um, hand scraping. And so that's a half inch engineered. People still want that extreme um, um, hand scraping and shading. When you have a ton of uh, oak graining and, and um, and so on in an oak floor, it's going to hide a lot of the scratches and problem areas. So, uh, well, that's all, folks. Thank you again for joining today. If you liked this video, please be sure to subscribe and like. Um, if you have any comments or questions, you could also comment down um, in, in this video. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Monica.